for the last 11 yeah. years and, and 12 years in, so, as a TA in Durham School. Durham School. Yeah. And I think I had heard that um, you took an interesting path to get here. You yeah. were a, a retired police officer? Yes. Uh, How's that transition go? <laughs> interesting. But, um, it's, I was with the police department for 20 years and decided to do some entrepreneurial work. And in the process of doing that, ended up here. And once you get with the children, it's hard to leave you just, you just enjoy what you do with them. Um, so you were a police officer for Durham, Durham Police? Yes. Uh, I guess first off, tell me a little bit about how your work as a police officer maybe helps as a, as a TA. Um, well, one thing is on the police side, you get to see the results of not, you know, of not having the early intervention. So you start to uh, see that side. So when we get to them at a younger age and you get to see them earlier, we start implementing some things early in life that hopefully can, you know, benefit them later and help keep them off of a path that will lead them into, you know, criminal activity. What's going through your mind right now as a TA uh, with all that's happening with the General Assembly? What's really going on through my mind is that I don't believe that some of the, the people in the General Assembly really understand the necessity and the needs for having the instructional system in the classroom. Um, sometimes we can get to a point in our lives that we forget actually what it takes to educate a child. And when we start to look at what it takes now, it, it's not quite when we were growing up. You know, it, things have changed. The demands placed on children have changed, which means that the demands placed on the teachers or certified instructors has changed. So without having that extra person in the classroom to help with the, the lower performing children, it doesn't allow that teacher to actually work with those who are quote unquote the higher performers. So somewhere there's going to be a disconnect. Somewhere we're going to have a child that's going to fall through those cracks. <coughs> Excuse me. So you know either it's going to be on the low end where we have the low performing children that are going to fall through the cracks because they're not getting the extra you know instructional time that they need or you're going to spend so much time with the low performing children that those that are actually on the mark or ahead of the curve will fall between between the cracks because they're not getting what they need. Um, so well, I got a little ahead of myself there. Actually, I want to talk a little bit too about for you on an individual level, why do you want to be a TA? What, what does it mean to you? Well, for me, it's all about that gratification. When you can take a child that, especially in the kindergarten level, when they're doing the transitioning, we're transitioning from the preschool environment to kindergarten where we're now in quote unquote big school and everything's new and all of a sudden the, the light bulb goes off. They get it. It's fun. We can, you know, I'm actually smart and being able to impart that to a child. There's, for me, there's no greater reward than being able to put something or implant something into a child's life and then having them come back later. I mean, I've been here long enough that I've had children that have matriculated through kindergarten and now they're going on to high school and they still remember you. And they still remember some of the little things that you did or some of the little things that you were able to do for them and get that hug from them. What does that mean to you, that hug? What yeah, does that mean? It, it, it means so much that, you know, children just love you and they want to be loved. And they want to know they care, that you care and that they matter in your life. And that, that's all it really means. It, it really means that you were able to impact something or impart something into that child's life. That's, that's so gratifying. The argument politically against TA funding mm -hmm. is there's only so much money in the pot and we have already very, very high class sizes here in North Carolina, and you know we could go and hire more teachers to then cut down on class size, but that money has to come from somewhere, and well, maybe it'll come from teacher assistance. How would you respond to that? You could hire more certified teachers, um, but I don't think that by removing that instructional assistant from the classroom, you can still provide the level of, of attention that they need. That, that they're getting now with that two-person you know, classroom. Um, you may be able to reduce the class size, but then there are still other things that we do that we provide other than just inside of that classroom. Um, and on the other end, if we're just talking about dollars and cents, while you're hiring large or, or certified teachers, you're actually now displacing another sector of the, the, the uh, population. 
So now while we're hiring certified teachers, you're actually putting teacher or instructional assistants out of work. And they're already struggling, so now that part of their income is gone. Is it a job that can be done with one person, with just a teacher? You talked about needing you know, two bodies in there, extra, extra attention. Can it be done with just one person? In a perfect world, yes. And we don't live in a perfect world. Things happen that will, you know, that require two people. You, you have children that, that have bathroom emergencies, children that are having a bad day, someone that just needs to have that extra voice. Could it be done with just one teacher? I don't really think you could do that effectively with one teacher. You know, could it be done? Yes. But I don't think we could get it done effectively. And if North Carolina really wants to reach the heights that they say they do in education, reducing the number of people or adults in the classroom is not the way to go. You talked about being a TA for the past 12 years, 11 here in Pearson Town. At this point, this is your life. Your life is being a TA. And you don't know, you really don't know what the future is, with whether you'll have a job. What's, what's going through your mind? That, that's kind of one of those things that every morning you wake up, you read the paper, and you wonder, okay, do I go to work today? You know, we had a staff meeting, and, and one of the questions came up from the principal, Mr. Teal, was like, okay, so if the decision is made that we don't have instructional assistance anymore, does that mean Monday I'm out of a job? And so you're always in that limbo. And for people who are doing this, and I think most of the General Assembly needs to understand it's not money. It is because we really care about the children. What does that do for the kids? You know, especially for the, the, the year-round classrooms like this school, where we've already been in class with them for six weeks, and all of a sudden that body's gone. We've already of, created relationships. A bit of a personal question, but if Monday comes around and you find out you don't have a job, what would you do? Would you be okay? Would I personally be okay? We'd make adjustments. We, we'd have to make some adjustments. You know, uh, on a personal note, you, you have to know that while it's not a large salary, it pays certain bills. So we'd have to do some other things to make sure that those bills are taken care of. But yeah. is that really what we want to be known for? Right. You said we, I'm assuming. What, we we as in the state. Of oh. North, the, you know, the, is that what North Carolina wants to be known for as far as, as, far as displacing the segment of the, of the population? I really don't think so. Uh, wife and kids? Yes. Uh, a wife, three children, and he, here's the thing. My children are grown, but all of them matriculated through Durham Public Schools. They are now three college graduates. That's what this, that is what this education system has been able to provide. And each time when they were in elementary school, there were two teachers. As a matter of fact, there were two teachers in their elementary all the way up through fifth grade. What does it mean to you to see Senator Woodard here today? That actually gives us some hope that you know, the entire General Assembly is not against this and that someone does understand what, what it takes to actually properly and successfully educate our children. You know, um, as I explained to you, we love having them come here, but really we need to have those people who don't understand what's going on and how this functions, maybe they need to come spend the day. You know, when, when we hear that, oh well, all they're doing is sitting in the, the teacher's lounge and, and making copies and anybody can do that, Come see.